and the name of the game is to connect. Now, tying this in to what Nicholas taught about visualization. Now, I guarantee you, I've read countless books from the greats, Palmer, Player, Byron Nelson, and I'm a fan of those guys because nobody was teaching them mental toughness tricks way back when. They learned this on their own, or they're naturally gifted, or they're just observant about themselves or self-aware. And to me, that's what made those guys great. Yeah, they had skills, but so does everybody else out there. And we know at those top levels of golf, and even at our level, the difference is whose mind is working better when you're actually playing in competition, right? So what these guys did, not only did Nicholas and these guys visualize the shot, they're up there, I see the movie, I'm going to go do this, right? But before they ever got to the course, they did this, quote, visualization, which means they imagine themselves hitting beautiful shots, playing the kinds of mechanical movements they want to do in different situations. Byron Nelson once said, in the middle of his record-breaking, does anybody remember how many, his record-breaking, how many uh, tour wins in a row? 11 tour wins in a row. In the middle of it, he said, I give myself my best lessons at 4 a.m. in the morning. 4 a.m. in the morning is when you can do your best practicing. And I talk about mental practice a lot. Kind of weird, but this is what these guys do. So they are working on this connection I'm talking about before they ever get to the golf course. And how, how do you make that connection? Still, I, I work with I work with well over well over a thousand athletes now in person, my office in Bellevue, and golfers and all kinds of athletes. And this is what I tell them, every single one of them. The way you make this connection is you assume you're making the connection. That's it. Now, an easy way to do that that I've taught golfers because this works really well in golf is to imagine this is another you. Anybody hear of the, the, the book um, Inner Golf by Tim Galway? So he calls, he, calls, he, he calls it the, oh man, I'm blanking. He has it uh, self one and self two. You're basically having conversations with yourself. And you want to do this before you ever get to the course. Like I said, I, yes, I know I repeat myself. That's for reinforcement purposes and also to make sure I'm on track because I go off track real easy. <laughs> I've been accused of having some ADD. And if I ever forget, I want you guys to ask me questions if I forget to cover something I said I was going to cover. Anyway, getting back to the connection. You assume you're making that connection. And that's all it takes. And you just do this any time. If you have a moment at your office, you have a, a moment um, as you're going to sleep. So I got this. I got this idea. Go, great. This is what I did in that nine months when I wasn't golfing at all. I said, okay. Well, I started, uh, somebody gave me a tape um, and it was, it had like beautiful waves crashing in the background like like it would at a resort kind of gave me this guide visualization on being on a resort and the guy is talking about and your swing is beautiful and you feel fluid and that's all great but my brain always goes down to the core what's the what's the efficiency thing for my days of being a corporate manager and i said you know what what is it that what's my real big problem out there on the golf course I said, I, I, I determined that if I could just hit the ball straight, I'd solve 90% of my problems. Anybody in that boat? I'm still in that boat. Just hit the ball straight. Don't go out of bounds. That causes most of our, our doubles and triples, right? If we can just go a whole round hitting the ball pretty straight, I'm probably going to be able to break 80. And the truth is, I fixed that part of my game way before I ever fixed putting. I was a terrible putter, and I was still breaking 80 because I was hitting the ball straight. So I said, what is the essence of hitting the ball straight? And this is what I came up with, with some help from some brilliant pros. Golf ball. 
We want the ball to go straight. Let's say there's our target, right? Golf club. Poor rendition of a club, but you get the picture. Let's say that's a nine iron, whatever. It doesn't matter what iron. The way to make a golf ball go straight is to square up this club perpendicular to this line of travel at the moment of impact. Basic physics. Anybody dispute that? Second, there's a second thing that needs to happen. This club, once it hits, has to still be square for a certain period of time afterwards. And it's not that long. I, I drew that backwards. <laughs> It's going to be like that, right? So your club face needs to be square for the moment of impact for a short period of time afterwards. Because if you hit it squared impact, but then your club goes like that, what's going to happen? Slice. Squared impact, go like that, you're going to hook it, right? So you do these two things and you will hit the ball straight. Anybody want to challenge me on that? I think so. <laughs> I've asked that question a number of times. Now, of course, really simplistic, Craig. Yeah, that's real easy. How do I make that happen on a consistent basis? Well, guess what? I'm going to keep this little diagram over to the side here. Conscious mind and unconscious mind. I spent nine months before I went to bed every night imagining my golf club doing this. I didn't think about my swing. I didn't think about balls going anywhere. I didn't think about feeling great on the course. I just thought over and over and over again that little moment. Who's got a club? Can I see a club? Perfect. That little moment, looking down with my own eyes, where the club is straight down that path. And that's all I did. And that's what got my 77 there at Eagle Ridge. It was crazy.